Welcome to chemistry classes. We are in the chapter surface chemistry. In this session 4. In this session, we are going to discuss about the structures and the properties and their applications of the colloidal state and emulsions. In this chapter, our aim is to discuss properties and applications of colloidal state and emulsions. Now, what are the properties of the colloidal salts? The first one is heterogeneous. We already discussed about this. These colloidal are heterogeneous in nature. This solution or this sol looks like heterogeneous solution. In this solution, two phases are present. That is dispersion phase and dispersion medium. Like as solvent and solute in the solution. One is dispersed phase and dispersed medium. And stable nature. These colloidal particles are state of motion and don't settle down bottom of the container. That means it indicates these have a random motion due to less gravity of colloidal particles. These are randomly moved in solution or soap. The next one is filterability. The filterability that indicates that the ability to filter through the membrane. That means if you passes this colloidal solution through ordinary paper, this can easily passes through the ordinary filter. But if you take the animal or vegetable membrane, these cannot pass through these filter papers. Because these the porous which are present in the vegetable or animal membranes are less than the particle size of colloids. So the soles of colloids cannot pass through animal or vegetable membrane. But these can easily pass through the ordinary filter paper. These are easily passes through ordinary filter. Because this ordinary filter has a pores or holes which are bigger than the colloidal size particles. So these can easily pass through this ordinary filter papers. But these cannot pass through the vegetable or animal membranes. The next property is colligative properties. We already know that these uh, colloidal particles are having the relative size and these are enhances the colloidal properties in the given solutions. That means uh, this can lower the vapor pressure of the solution. The first one is lowering vapor pressure or it can be depresses the freezing point of solution. And third one is elevation of boiling point or increase in boiling point and osmotic pressure. These few of the colgative properties. So due to presence of the solute particles which is called as dispersion phase, these colgative properties are enhanced by the colloidal solutions. But in this case, the mole fraction of the dispersed phase is very less. So the corresponding colloidal properties is also very small for the colloids. That means the mole fraction of dispersed phase is less. That means uh, only less number of particles are present. So that leads to decrease in colloidal properties. The next one, Tyndall effect. This Tyndall effect is observed when the light is passes through the colloidal solutions in the dark place. That means if you passes the any light through the normal solution or true solution due to the small size of the solute particles, these particles cannot scatter the corresponding light. But in the colloidal solutions, the size of the colloidal particles is very high compared to the true solutions or two particles. This can easily scatter the light and the way you can easily see in the dark places. Due to scattering of light, these colloidal souls can easily exhibit the Tyndall effect. Due to this Tyndall effect, you can easily observe the path of the light through the colloidal solution in dark places. 
by the results of tyndall effect we can easily observe the path of light in dark places here the effect of tyndall is you can easily show in this picture this is the true solution which has a colloidal particle sizes less than 1 nanometer when the light is passes through this true solution does not show any way or path of the light in the solution because the true particle sizes are very less compared to the wavelength of the light but when this passes through the colloidal solution which has a particle length in the wavelength of the light they are scattered with the light when light is passes through that and you can easily show the way of the light or path of the light through the colloidal solution as you show in the figure this is the effect of Tyndall for the colloidal solutions as you shown in this picture. This is the pathway we are seeing here by the dark places. And the next property of the colloidal solutions is Brownian movement. The colloidal particles which are present in the colloidal soul are moved randomly or with the zigzag movement in the solution that is called Brownian movement. That means in the colloidal particles are moved zigzag or move randomly in zigzag motion that means without any direction. So this is called Brownian movement of the colloidal souls. That means what due to the low gravity of the colloidal particles, low gravity that means less mass these are easily moved in the solution and uh, these have a low impact, unequal impact with the dispersed medium particles. The impact between the dispersed phase particles and medium particles are unequal. They don't have a elastics, elastic collisions between them. Dispersion phase particles and uh, medium particles is unequal. They don't have a elastic collisions. So that reason they are randomly moved in the solution. As shown in this picture, when this unequal impact between the solvent that is dispersed medium and dispersed phase that is solute, these are randomly moved as shown in this picture. When it is uh, collided with walls and it will come back and they are randomly moved like this. But when you increase the size of the colloidal soul that will become the very heavy and the impact between these two phases becomes equal. So their randomness is decreased so that they get settled that will become a suspension. That means as the size of the particle increases, the randomness of particles is decreases and they get settled. Now the significance of the colloidal solutions in the Brownian movement. What are the properties of the Brownian movement and what are the applications? This Brownian movement of the colloidal particles proves the kinetic theory of the colloidal solutions. That means the particles which are present in the colloidal soil, they have a ceaseless motion of the molecules. Hence, they have good support to the kinetic theory. This Brownian movement of colloidal particles can give the support to the kinetic theory. And also the Brownian movement opposes the force of the gravity. That means uh, the gravity is opposing to the motion of the particles which are present in the colloidal solution. Hence this remains a state of a motion. They are not settled due to the random motion. So this is the responsible for the stability of the colloidal solution. That means what if the moment is decreases they are slowly settled down on the bottom of the solution. So they are become a precipitate but due to the random movement that is Brownian movement. This Brownian movement or random movement can give the stability to the colloidal solution. Next one is electrical properties. How they are reacted with the electricity. This electrical property of the colloidal solution proves the stability of the colloidal soul. 
because this colloidal particles have a opposite charge which is having the dispersed medium both are having opposite charges they ripple with each other and they get the random moment hence they get the stable colloidal soul in the system that means the charge which is present on the colloidal particles or repels the dispersed medium particles hence they get random motion or brownian movement what you have seen in the last case random motion of particles in the solution due to random motion this colloidal souls don't settled so these are very stable take a simple example here the colloidal souls of arsenic sulfide rm or platinum or silver all these have negatively charged particles in the same way the colloidal solution of ferric hydroxide or aluminum hydroxide have positively charged particles and this nature of the positive or negative of this corresponding solutions which are present in the colloidal solution can easily known by using the electrophoresis this is the instrument which are using to identify the charge which is present on the colloidal particles by using electrophoresis we can identify charge on the colloidal particles this is involves the when any electric charge is passes through the colloidal solutions the negatively charged particles are moves towards the positive end that is cathode and positively charged particles moves towards the negative end that is anode as shown in this picture this is the colloidal solution which is having a both negative and positive particles and this red particles indicates the positive particles and this blue particles indicates the negative particles and due to the attractions between the opposite poles when you apply the charge in the electrodes which is made up with any neutrals like platinum or rm or silver when you passes this current and the opposite particles are attracted towards the anode and cathode respectively they forms the clear solution in the u tube at the end of the electrodes that dense in the color is occurred as you shown in this picture all molecules are attracted towards the opposite poles and uh, at the end of the electrophoresis the density of the particles at the electrodes is increases hence the color is increases at the electrode take a simple example here electric soul of the silver sulfide which is having a negatively charged particles so due to the presence of the negative charge when you apply the electricity through this it can moves towards the anode these particles due to negative charge moves towards anode then what happens all particles are together at anode the color of intensity at the anode is increases intensity of solution or color of the solution is increases at anode 